Hi guys, welcome! In the upcoming Tears of the Tyrant episode update, a new type of rune will be introduced known as Arcane Runes. And in this video, we'll discuss everything you need to know about these new runes so that you can strategize and select the most suitable runes in advance. Take note that this information is based on what was released in the China beta test server, and there may be variations in the actual content upon release in the C, EU, and global servers. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Upon reaching base level 160, free rune slots will be added to the advanced rune interface where you can place the new arcane runes. There are 14 arcane runes in total which are categorized into two types, the attack runes which are colored red and the functional runes which are colored yellow. You can only equip a maximum of two arcane runes of the same color, that is either two red and one yellow or two yellow and one red. Furthermore, arcane runes are not job restricted and they offer special effects along with an increase in your base HP. Let's break down the unique attributes of each of the 7 red colored attack runes. First is a servant rune which enhances the damage output of your living summons while simultaneously reducing the damage they receive by up to 17.5%. This rune is a must for classes that have living summons like Begetter's Homunculi, Lightbringer's Pioneer, Ninja's Shadow Clones, and Phantom Dancer's Night Shadows. Second is the Transmission Rune, which boosts your final damage against all enemies outside a 6 meter radius from your character by up to 35%. This essentially gives you an AoE damage boost in both PvE and PvP settings, making it a superior choice for classes who rely on long-range skills such as Stellar Hunters, Magic Classes, and a lot more. However, you need to be mindful of your positioning to maximize the benefit from this rune. Third is a Resonance rune, which improves the damage of the next attack by up to 35% after a 3-second interval of not engaging in combat. It's tailored for burst damage dealers such as Lightbringer, Wataru, Dragon Fist, and Saitama. Fourth is a Punishment Rune, which gives up to 70% chance of inflicting HP loss damage to enemies attacking you. The formula for the HP loss damage is based on the sum of both physical and magic attack, thus it's best suited for classes that invest in a lot of these two attributes such as Rune Master, Begetter, and Wrath Greasy. Fifth is a White Blade Rune, which increases your final damage by up to 35% though there is only one enemy within 5 meters. Thus, it's going to be advantageous for classes built for dealing single target burst damage. In PvP, it encourages strategic positioning and a play style that focuses on picking off the primary threat quickly and efficiently. Sixth is a Fervent Rune, which triggers when your attack speed reaches 480%, wherein it will enhance both movement speed and max HP by up to 17.5%. Although it's designed to improve the quality of life of auto-attack builds like AARM and Flow Blade Ninja, I think support classes might also benefit from this rune by investing some stat points on Aji. Seven and last is a Bloody Rune, which directly amplifies all HP loss damage dealt to enemies by up to 52%. It's definitely a must for classes that primarily deal HP loss damage such as Chronomancer with Bomber build, Stellar Hunter with SP build, and Divine Avenger with Sacrifice build. Next, here are the unique attributes of each of the 7 yellow colored functional runes. First is the Misfortune rune, which increases the chance and duration of abnormal statuses inflicted on enemies by up to 35%. It also grants up to 35% chance to dispel one of the target's buffs when an abnormal status is applied on the enemy. Thus, this rune is tailored for status-based builds in PvP. Second is the Trick rune, which gets triggered when the incoming damage is high. When receiving damage greater than 15% of your max HP in a single hit, you'll have up to 52% chance to enter hiding status and to disarm the attacker for 2 seconds. Hence, this rune is a good defense mechanism against heavy damage dealers and can be a game changer when facing powerful enemies. Third is a spirit rune, which contributes to SP regeneration, restoring a fixed amount of SP every 5 seconds. You also have up to 35% chance of not consuming SP when using skills. As a result, this rune is particularly valuable for classes struggling with SP-related issues. Fourth is a Tai Chi rune, which converts up to 35% of the damage received into HP loss damage that will be deducted evenly over 3 seconds. This rune enhances survivability by giving players a window of opportunity to counterattack, escape from dangerous situations, or recover the damage taken using healing skills or items. 
It will also perfectly complement Hela's bloodline of the deceased buff, which can convert 100% of HP loss into healing. Fifth is a combat ready rune, which converts up to 7% of the damage dealt into an HP shield for yourself. The amount of shield cannot exceed your max HP and it lasts for 2 seconds. Hence, it will be good for bolstering survivability of damage dealers in both PvE and PvP as the shield applied can serve as protective buffer against incoming damage. Six is a Galaxy Rune, which offers up to 52% chance of preventing enemies from dispelling or removing your self buffs. This rune is a good general choice for all jobs, as most classes rely on their self buffs to be more effective in battle. It will also be a good defense mechanism against Chronomancer's Remove Buff, Thanatos' Nightmare, Saitama's Enforcement of Justice, and Jormungandr's Plunder of Fate. Seven and last is the Incombustible Rune, which enhances your final damage reduction by up to 35% when your HP falls below 50%. Thus, this rune is a versatile choice for improving overall survivability whether you are DPS or support. Before we continue on, I'd like to give special thanks to the sponsor of this video, Smalwen. With years of experience in the industry and partnerships with various game developers, they offer top-ups for a wide range of games at competitive prices, including Premium and BCC for Ragnarok Mobile. Smalwen Top-Up is available in many countries across all servers and you may pay via their trusted payment platform. In the Philippines, I can pay securely using my GCash via Alipay and receive the BCC instantly. Please do check out Smalwan's pricing and payment methods using my exclusive link in the description box below. Next, let's discuss how to obtain and upgrade Arcane Runes. First is by unlocking the new White Star Airship Instance and completing the related quest, where you'll get one Arcane Rune self-select gift box which lets you choose any Arcane Rune. You can also get a random arcane rune that you do not own by clearing the White Star Airship Instance. It can be cleared 5 times per week which means that you'll get all 14 arcane runes in up to 3 weeks. After you've collected all 14 arcane runes, you can no longer get them from the instance. You can also get the related upgrade materials from clearing White Star Airship. The more difficult the level and the higher your evaluation score are, the more rewards you can obtain. The new upgrade materials are the Starburst Sand for increasing the level and the Holy Region Crystals for increasing the upper limit. To upgrade Arcane Runes, you first need to increase the upper limit using Zenny and Holy Region Crystals. After increasing the upper limit, you can consume a certain amount of Starburst Sand to upgrade its level. The number of materials needed to increase the upper limit and level will become progressively higher and higher. For most runes, the level 50 effect is 60 times that of level 1, and the level 100 effect is 175 times that of level 1. And to reach level 100, you'll need about 350 million zenny, 3,570 holy region crystals, and 42,400 starburst sand for each rune. By consistently achieving SSS ratings and the White Star Airship's Elite 15 difficulty, you can obtain as much as 2,750 star per sand and between 30 to 35 Holy Region Crystals every week. Thus, it will take approximately 16 weeks or 4 months to gather sufficient star per sand for upgrading one arcane rune to level 100. However, the primary limiting factor would be the Holy Region Crystals. Is estimated to take 102 weeks or 2 years to be able to reach level 100 cap for a single arcane rune. And this calculation is only based on an assumption that you'll get the highest drop rate of 7 holy region crystals per successful run. Despite the prolonged development period and the fact that the rewards for the last 50 levels are nearly double the rewards for the first 50 levels, the cost effectiveness of upgrading the rune still follows a decreasing trend. Therefore, after choosing the three runes you need, it's advised to distribute your resources evenly across them, ensuring a balanced approach. What I think is good about the design of the Arcane Rune system is that it's a completely independent development system that would provide a more dynamic gameplay for all classes. Both new and veteran players will have a fair starting point as it avoids using old resources for upgrading. The progression is gradual and the only RNG element involved comes from getting either 6 or 7 Holy Region Crystals per successful run in the White Star Airship. Currently, the only method to expedite upgrading Arcane Runes is by spending real money, which is a common model for MMORPGs. 
each gift box costs 12 BCC, which offers 200 star percent and 5 Holy Region crystals. There's a limit of 50 boxes per month, amounting to 600 BCC, which I think is a reasonable price for both light and heavy spenders. This means that it will only take around 9 to 10 months to upgrade an arcane rune to level 100 if you opt to spend real money. However, one of my concerns with the arcane rune system is that the upgrade materials invested into the arcane runes cannot be returned, just like the Svaltov dust used for upgrading ancient relics. Given the irreversible nature of the upgrading process, some players may hesitate to spend real money on the current pool of arcane runes, fearing that more powerful runes will be released in the future. So that's it for my guide on arcane runes which will be coming in the Tears of the Tyrant episode update next month. Which arcane rune do you think will significantly impact your main class? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I'd love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.